Okay, so how did the bike go? A little bit slow in the back. Maybe you guys uh, go behind me when we uh, leave over here from this place to the next. So I can, uh, you can see in first, first view how you have to cycle through Amsterdam. I'll teach you a bit because it's really easy. It seems all really difficult with all these really dangerous cars and trucks. I can assure you that breaks too. Okay, welcome in Amsterdam. My name is Sander and you can ask me anything you like. I'm as local as you're probably ever gonna meet. I can um, tell you all nice anecdotes, stories, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about history and other things while we go along. So you're always pleased. If you have any wishes now in the trip, I can actually divert the trip to whatever you want to. Okay, well, welcome in Amsterdam again. This is actually the River Amstel, going from this side, going into town, dispersing in all the canals. And they build a dam in the Amstel. And that is actually where the name Amsterdam came from. So, as you maybe know, some of you are acquainted with this country, but um, I already heard there's some Aussies among us. Where are you all from? US, I heard. Which part? US is big. Florida. <laughs> Florida, right. The bikes as well. So, that's close call. You guys from? London, Australia. London and Australia, okay. Well, we have a bit of a diverse um, thing. Australia. Australia as well? Yep. Alright, well I'll give you a little bit of an impression because you are all from huge countries. Um, we are really <coughs> a tiny small country. So actually we are like a um, Delta um, country. Like um, Bangladesh or the area Louisiana because we are all from big rivers coming out in Europe. And this goes for thousands of years. So you have many patches and marshes and that's where four and a half thousand years ago some hunters were living and they were just making living with their homes on little higher patches of ground. So now if I take a leap into history forward to where we are now and then minus 500 years, 600 years. That was actually when this little village started to blossom because they built the dam in 1100 which is now Dam Square they built a dam in the river and that's where a trading post started. <coughs> so that's where a lot of trading occurred and that is actually from the moment this city started growing. And in these times the people also found out that you can't build in mud. Because if you build a stone building in a mud area, the building will just sink away. So a little bit back um, about the size of our country. I mean, if you go from Brisbane to Darwin, domestic flight, four hours long. If I go from Chippewa Airport, which is our airport here, four hours, I'm in North Africa. To do a little <laughs> bit of an impression. If you go by car, from the north of our country to the south, it's two and a half hours. If you go from the east to the west, it's one and a half hour. That's our whole country. So you can imagine that we don't have as much domestic flights as you all have in your country. So that is to start and to give you a little bit of an impression. And now you're in an international city. I already told you the size of our country. That is actually the size of London. So you can imagine that this is an international village where you are at the moment. We only have 800,000 people. If you climb on a high building here, you can see the farmland around. So it's only like tiny. That's why I call this an international village. Because it's many times you're here on a nice summer day and you see friends on the bike. Yeah, because it's really small. So, we have about one and a half million bikes. That's more than the people who live here. So, telling you why this country is the safest to bike in is actually, um, it's actually the number one. I think Denmark is the number two. Why? Because it's integrated into our life and into our system. Some of you I've asked before you left where, which country you're from. That is because most of you are from car countries, not bike countries. It is a bike country. Everything what you're going to experience today in Amsterdam that goes countrywide. We have countrywide, we have cycle lanes. If you're 12 and you finish your primary school, you have to do a bike exam in traffic. So that also means that if you go for your driver license with a car, you're being told 
about bikes. A car in this country will never take a blind turn when the bikes are coming. He has to look over his shoulder, see if something comes. It's coming. So that is why you will not be hit by a car today. Even if you don't see the car, the car will see you. No worries. You're a balanced vehicle. Officially, you have half a meter on each side. Why? Because you're a balanced vehicle. So if a car comes really close to you, and you hit the car and you do, oh, I'm sorry, I made this. No, it's his fault because he knows you're a balanced vehicle. He comes too close to you. That's his fault. So don't worry too much. I will give you an example. I will take you behind me, show you how to do things. You have a crossing. If you have a crossing, for instance, with no traffic signs at all, just remember everything from your right hand side, even pedestrians, go first. That's how it works. So everything that comes from the left on the crossing with no traffic signs, has to give way to you, even a car. So if you see a car coming from the left and you go like, the car will go, of course. But if you just keep on persisting, biking, the car will just stop and that's how it works. So practice this on the way because we are for three hours on the bike. I will try and make sure that it's not going to be my bike talks. So um, we'll soon move over to the next stop because I can tell you lots more about the history and how it is possible that you can build homes in a city on a putty because that's what's happening here. Any questions so far? How come no helmets, no bike helmets? Because of what I just told you. It is safe. It is safe. And it, uh, it's like, really, it is rarely that people make a serious accident. The serious accident now are more occurring. Why? Because you have tourists who just go over the street like this and then you, you come as a local going to your job with 45 kilometers an hour on a sport bike. That is dangerous. So tourists are actually at this moment the most dangerous people. If you guys drive in a taxi and you just blindly step out of your taxi door, you have a bike on your bloody lap <laughs> and probably have to bring him to the hospital as well. But that's the the fault from the driver because the driver should have told you wait because he can see in his mirrors and he knows about this he should warn you so if that ever happens you have to blame the bloody driver but now you know always even if you step out of a car look over your shoulder then you step out of a car that's what you learn here in this country that's why we don't have helmets and of course there are some people who wear helmets, especially the, the, the racing bikes and the sporty guys who go really fast through the countryside. They have. And yesterday on the news I saw for the first time that now we have to wear helmets with the new e-bikes. Mm. We have two types of e-bikes. One goes like um, 25 kilometers an hour and there's now a really fast one. The e-bike for everybody, that's an electrical bike. And the fastest goes 45 kilometers. That is going to be a wearing helmet. Okay, the next one.